Hey there, it's Subliminal, bringing you an opinionated video on the internet. Well, you're probably wondering where Tyler is. Well, Tyler has been nice enough to allow yours truly to do a guest video on his channel, and I would like to thank Tyler for this opportunity. I really do appreciate it. So yes, in this video, I'll be responding to a video made by Force. Now, for me, this is the first time I've done a video on these guys, but from what I've seen from this video that I'm responding to, it's no different from any MTV or BuzzFeed video that pollutes this site. But anyway, we have a bunch of Muslims complaining about being misrepresented in films, how apparently they are always the bad guy, despite the fact that most of their complaints, if not all of them, are about fictional characters, that when you think about it, no one really cares about it. So without any further delay, let's get into this steaming pile of shit and see what the big fucking deal is, shall we? I loved the 1980s when Chuck Norris used to kill swaths of my people with a machine gun. Yeah, that was pretty damn cool. Chuck Norris being the macho man going around killing people left and right, with all the villains not being able to hit a barn door at five yards. Legend has it that Chuck Norris has no chin under his beard. There is only a fist. Legend has it that Chuck Norris's tears cure cancer. Sadly, Chuck Norris doesn't cry. But all jokes aside, what's your point? Why would you want to be associated with the villains within the movie? When I last checked, Muslims aren't a race of people. Religion isn't a race. How does anyone get confused between the two? In some brown booyah base of a country. It was awesome to watch. Let the hate flow through you. Wow, okay, there's a lot of underlying sarcasm and passive aggressiveness there in that sentence alone. You do know that in those films, the terrorists, that are the bad guys, are generally hired by the main villain, right? And that terrorists are seen as villains, given that terrorists, by definition, are people who use unlawful violence and intimidation in pursuit of political aims, right? And since we're going on the topic of brown booyah-based countries, or whatever the fuck you want to call it, terrorists aren't always going to be living in the nicest of places. Now, it's not to say that all Muslims live in these backwater places. It's just a movie. It's not going to actually depict everything in it. Otherwise, Chuck Norris would have been killed within the first few seconds of that clip, if it were realistic. Ah, the question of this video, so let me answer that for you. I would say that Muslims are betrayed fine. Personally, when I watch a movie, I don't think, hmm, well, there could be more Muslims in movies. I usually watch a movie because it's entertaining, the characters are well developed, and the story is enjoyable. I don't get my boxes in a twist over something so trivial as religion or race when it comes to movies. That thought process never enters my mind, as when you watch a movie, you're supposed to have that suspension, suspension of, of disbelief. disbelief as the film catfates you with its story and cinematography. Not, however, making an argument that movies are becoming whitewashed or certain races or, or people aren't being represented at all. Muslims are always terrorists. Are they? See, call me naive or whatever, but when I see the bad guys in an Indiana Jones movie which uses these kinds of people, I think nothing of them except for them being the bad guys, or people who are hired by the main villains in those movies. The Nazis, which I would say is far worse, but who the fuck cares? Indiana Jones rocks, and they are some of the best films of all time. Violent terrorists. Terrorists. Bad people. Shows like 24. Hello, Sorry, but the timing on that was really good for a joke. 24, the show, was something I never watched. But even then, I'm pretty sure that they weren't saying that all Muslims are like this. They were basically dealing with a terrorist organization, which so happened to be Muslim. As the show aired, I think, and don't quote me on this for any of you 24-hour diehard fans out there, 
after the 9-11 attacks on the Twin Towers in New York City, where the show's creators dramatized the show to bring in more viewers and to create a better story. True lies. The last thing you will see will be your blood spraying across his face. Again, another terrorist organization that happened to be Muslim. But did you know that True Lies, the movie, was an action comedy film? Key word there, comedy. comedy. So when comedy comes into mind, it's not to be taken seriously, you muppet. Even that line you give us isn't supposed to be taken seriously. But whatever, if you, want, you guys want to be stupid, then carry on. You constantly have this reinforcement of very negative image of Muslims. Okay, hold up here. Let's, let's get these two films into context, since you guys aren't giving any at this point. Okay, so Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, perhaps one of the greatest movies of all time. This man here has been hired by the Nazis to kill Indiana and his company. Whether he's a terrorist or not, it doesn't matter, as the guy gets about 10 seconds of screen time before being shot and killed by Indiana in an iconic scene. And in the film Back to the Future, the Doc bought some plutonium from terrorists to fuel his time machine. That sentence alone sounds crazy already, but even then, it's a movie. And he forgot to pay them. And in this part, he is being gunned down by them for it. Whether they are Muslim or not, it doesn't matter. It's never established in the movie, or at least from what I remember, as I haven't watched Back to the Future in a very long time. But from what I can remember, I don't think it was ever established, because do you know why? It's because they are either plot devices or extras that no one cares about. There was like these cardboard angry stock brown characters. Oh, no! Yeah, I like how they decided to use a clip from a cartoon that was perhaps made in the 1930s when times were different to try and illustrate a point. Yeah, those cartoons back then were racist or stereotypical, but it wasn't just Muslims that got taken the piss out of them. It was black people, Jews, Chinese people, and even Germans themselves. So don't think you were the only people to be mocked by these cartoons. Who used to waste bullets shooting machine guns in the air, which I thought was very inefficient. No son of immigrants would ever be that wasteful. Here's a suggestion, and just hear me out, hear me out, hear me out on this one. Just. Let me speak my piece, but stop taking the film so seriously. You're supposed to have a suspension of disbelief. If you want to pick apart everything in the movie that isn't logical, then go ahead. But by doing that, you're basically sucking all the fun out of it. Muslim women are always portrayed as like the oppressed woman, the terrorist, or the hyper patriot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that first one is quite accurate of Muslim women in countries under Sharia law. So I would have to give the filmmakers props for getting that right. But those other two? <laughs> well, could you provide some examples of that? It would be great if you could, because so far you sound like as if you're talking out of your ass. I remember when I was a kid, I would pray that like Bart Simpson became Muslim, or I'd pray that Spider-Man became Muslim, because we didn't have any role models. Then why don't you make one then? Instead of bitching about not having a role model, Model, why don't you make one up? Or is Muhammad the Prophet not a good enough role model for you guys? Oh wait, you're right, he's not, since the man committed a lot of jihad and had sex with a nine-year-old girl who was his wife. Yeah, definitely not the best role model for any Muslim or anyone in general. If you could create a Muslim protagonist, what would they be like? A black man with an African name who was elected president. Hilarious. So funny, I forgot to laugh. Don't give up your day job, whatever the fuck that is. Just kidding. I would love to see a Muslim character who saves the day. A Muslim woman who's at the forefront, fighting the system, fighting oppression. Sorry, can you repeat that line, please? I thought you said something about fighting oppression. Fighting the system, fighting oppression. <laughs> Oh wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. 
<laughs> so that would mean denouncing your faith as a Muslim, basically not making you a Muslim anymore, right? Since women in Sharia ruled countries are Muslims under oppression. Are your self-awareness levels that low that you didn't think that beforehand? Or are you really that deluded that you think Muslim women are only oppressed in the West and in movies? Wow, you cannot make up this shit, folks. This is a new form of crazy. Who's like binge watching television, who like really loves donuts, like who's very bad at bowling. An awkward guy that sweats a lot. And look, he's eating chicken biryani and, uh, you know, watching Game of Thrones. Oh, God. Christ. <laughs> this is painful to sit through and watch. No joke, this video is fucking stupid. If you want to make that character, then go ahead. No one's stopping you. Though from that description, he sounds like one of the most boring characters I have ever heard of. Just human beings, you know? Someone like me, you know, living from paycheck to paycheck, dating Scarlett Johansson. Who just so happens to be a Muslim. Like, why does it matter that this person has to be a Muslim? Surely if the character is well thought out and interesting, race and religion shouldn't matter at all, right? But no, you guys have to make the biggest fucking deal out of it, because apparently Hollywood thinks all Muslims are bad and are terrorists. <laughs> and that's really the portrayals that I want to see, like just normal human beings. Uh, but now you have shows like The Night Of, where at least we're getting accused of crimes of passion. But isn't that the excuse of terrorists, that it's an act of passion towards their political aims? So really, I don't think it really makes much of a difference. But then again, who the fuck cares? For once, as opposed to terrorism, so we're slowly moving on up. What we as Muslims have to do is learn to harness the power of pop culture as a means of reframing perceptions towards Muslims. <laughs> What you need to learn is to stop bitching and moaning over trivial shit in movies and films. God damn, that's all you guys have been doing throughout this two and a half minute video. It's mind numbing and annoying to say the very fucking least. Right now we need those shows where you have Muslims playing good people. We need it. Then go fucking do it then. Don't bitch and moan on the internet because you're too lazy to do it. Christ, that was annoying to sit through and listen to. You gotta love how these big companies such as MTV and BuzzFeed, and even Fox as the example provided here in this video, create these straw man arguments and provide little to no context on what they are criticizing, other than some bullshit that Muslims aren't being portrayed right, because a select handful of whiny bitches said so. Right, well that concludes my video. If you liked what you saw or liked what you heard, then don't forget to slap a like onto this video. It is always greatly appreciated. I'd like to thank Tyler again for allowing me to do a guest video on his channel. I really do appreciate the opportunity to do something like this on his channel. If you liked my video and the way I presented it, then subscribe to my channel. A link to, be to that will be somewhere on the screen as well as somewhere in the description below. I have more content like this on my channel if that's what gets your fancy. As always, I'm Subliminal. Peace.